How's everybody doing? My name is Alan Roberts. I hope everybody is having a phenomenal day. I know I am. Uh, before you go anywhere, make sure you like, subscribe, do all that stuff, but also check out our uh, link to our uh, new apparel and our coaching things. Give me one second. Here's the apparel, and oh, I might as well just share where we can get the books too. Why not? But hope everybody's having a great day. Today, we are going to be talking about why doctors skipping lifestyle fixes for diabetes or committing malpractice. And this is going to be, I know people are going to be like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? I just want everybody to understand where I'm coming from with this. Like if you do the research on this, it comes kind of weird. And there's multiple reasons why. First of all, type 2 diabetes is completely avoidable in 90, like 5, 99% of the cases. It's completely avoidable. It is a lifestyle driven illness more than any other um, in, besides obesity, of course. But I don't consider obesity uh, an illness. I consider it the result of an illness. But just to be clear, like type two diabetes is mostly avoidable, and it, in many, in the vast instances of it, it is reversible uh, or maintainable by lifestyle alone. We have just this past week, we have two more clients that are off all diabetes medications that came to us pre-diabetic or diabetic, and we've we've help them adjust their lifestyle, help with some, some with supplementation, some with not. Um, and they have, you know, gotten out of the pre-diabetes area. You know, they are no longer on any medications whatsoever at all. And we're very proud of that. Like Crystal and I have probably helped cure more type two cases of diabetes than the average doctors together too. Like, I mean, it's, they don't cure it. And that's actually a big problem. They don't even try to get to the root cause. Uh, and they just go towards drugs at first. And this is wild because I did have a new client come to me uh, and literally about this issue, basically, where the doctor immediately, when, when, they, when they entered the pre-diabetic era, era, they just immediately put them on metformin and with no other, like, hey, you're pre-diabetic, so you need to start taking metformin. It wasn't, here's what's going to happen to you, which is malpractice. It wasn't, here's what could happen with this medication, which is malpractice. It wasn't like, hey, you know, you should maybe start going for some walks, get some sunlight, hydrate yourself properly and not eat like an asshole. It was just, here's metformin, right? And I find this to be egregious. Uh, it, it's, it should be criminal and it actually is. We just don't hold them accountable to it. Um, Pre-diabetes and di type 2 diabetes are metabolic disorders driven by insulin resistance, which significant long-term risks include cardiovascular disease, kidney failure, neuropathy, and many, many, many others. Okay, thanks. Um, while metformin is the common first line pharmaceutical treatment, a comprehensive lifestyle intervention with berberine supplementation, avoidance of ultra processed foods, daily physical activity, proper hydration, one ounce per pound of bo ideal body mass around, uh, and adequate sleep matches metformin's efficacy in glycemic control, addresses root causes, which metformin doesn't do, and avoids side effects, which metformin obviously causes. Um, this argument asserts that a physician who skips the lifestyle approach for a newly pre, newly diagnosed pre-diabetic or type two diabetic, exposes the patients to unnecessary harm and failing to treat the underlying disease. The standard of care for a physician's duty is that medical malpractice occurs when physicians fail to adhere to the standard of care, causing the patient harm. The standard for care for pre-diabetes and type two diabetes, as supported by clinical guidelines, uh, even from the American Diabetes Association in 2025, prioritizes a lifestyle intervention at the first line approach due to their efficacy and safety. Physicians have a duty to recommend treatment supported by evidence, minimize harm by selecting interventions with the least risk, and address root causes, not merely symptoms, to promote long-term health. Our healthcare industry in general is nearly not approaching uh, the root causes about most of the disease that is you know, plaguing our entire country. Uh, but that's what I'm going to argue is because most doctors are not qualified to treat metabolic disorder. They know nothing about what causes metabolic disorder. They don't understand nutrition because they're not taught on it. They may, some doctors may do the extra steps. Dr. Alan Chen, I know, has done this extra steps. Uh, Sean Baker, there's many. But it's not taught in their schooling. Like th just being an MD does not mean you're, qu mean in, you're qualified by logic to treat metabolic disorder. Yet alone, to avoid lifestyle intervention, which they're not taught anything about. And they're not taught anything about holistic or natural remedies uh, because they are an allopathic. They went to an allopathic medical school. Allopathic medical school was set up by the Rock by Rockefeller in like 1910, by the way, and it basically, it, like, they basically squashed 
all other types of treatment. So you have to go pharmaceutical and surgery first. That is not how health has been forever. You should have your choices. There should be people that can treat you uh, with herbs and supplementation. There should be able to be treat people, people that can treat you uh, with other, like with however you think is good for you. You should just be given the information. And where it gets sticky is that the information about lifestyle mitigation and the use of what would be considered a, 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 a veridic a medicine, berberine, like um, it comes from, uh, like, it's been used for thousands of years to regulate blood sugar and things like that. I I would argue that we should stick with the natural stuff first because it doesn't have side effects. You see? Now, uh, the efficacy of lifestyle interventions versus metformin, if you take a look at it, berberine reduces HbA1c by 0.5 to 2% and fasting glucose by 20 to 50 mi uh, milligrams per deciliter, comparable to... Uh, metformin's 1% to 1.5% HbA1c reduction via AMPK activation. Now, the thing about that is berberine by itself is shown to be just as effective as metformin by that, by that statement. Like, it can be even more effective than just berberine because or than just metformin because berberine reduces HbA1c by 0.5 to 2%. And Metformin is 1% to 1.5%. Now, of course, if the person is taking berberine and has a lifestyle on top of that, the ultra-processed food avoidance alone would uh, uh, lower the HbA1c by anywhere from 0.3 to 1.0, and it reduces uh, type 2 diabetes risk by 30 to 60%. I don't understand why we would not tell every human being to avoid ultra-processed foods, yet alone people that are developing type 2 diabetes, um, physical activity, 150 minutes a week uh, of moderate exercise lowers HbA1c by 0.5 to 0.7 percent. Shit, exercise is damn near as efficacious as metformin. Um, hydration, adequate adequate intake, one ounce per pound of ideal body mass supports glucose regulation, uh, reduces hypergly hyperglycemia risk by 20 to 30 percent, and sleep seven to nine hours uh, a week improve uh, or a night improves insulin sensitivity and lowers HbA1c by 0.3 to 0.5. Uh, countering sleep-related metabolic dysfunction. So, like, all these put together, you know, collectively, these interventions could achieve an HbA1c reduction of 1% to 2.5%. So it is at least as effective as metformin, having berberine and all the lifestyle mitigations, if not much more effective than berberine, than just, than ber excuse me, than metformin by itself. That right there should be reason enough for doctors to suggest the latter. They should they should suggest berberine uh, and lifestyle like mitigation by proper hydration, sleep, stress relief, uh, pro get, you know, avoiding ultra processed foods, getting plenty of activity, those sorts of things. Alone, like berberine plus those is more efficacious and safer for you because when you can adjust the root problems versus symptom management, also. Uh, oh, wait, hang on. Let's do the harmful har harms from metformin and safety of lifestyle interventions. Side effects for metformin are gastrointestinal issues, nausea, and diarrhea affect 20 to 30 percent of patients with long-term risks include vitamin 12, uh, B12 deficiency, 10 to 30 percent of users, and rare but serious uh, lactic acidosis. Um, so in other words, you're risking nausea and diarrhea fairly constantly in 20 to 30 percent of the fucking patients. Uh, and it could cause uh, long term a B12 deficiency. I don't understand here. Um, uh, I, I, I'm missing why we should be going to metformin instead of berberine in general because the uh, for because that's not that way. Uh, symptom management metformin lowers glucose, but but does not address underlying insulin resistance, inflammation, or lifestyle factors, potentially allowing diseases to progression. And that right right alone right there is better because berberine does in fact increase insulin sensitivity, which is something metformin does not do. And there's also dependency. Reliance on metformin may discourage lifestyle changes, perpetuating poor health habits and increasing long-term complications. Now addressing the root causes versus symptom management, berberine enhances insulin uh, signaling and reduces hepatic glucose output. The ultra-processed uh, food avoidance reduces glycemic load and inflammation, improving metabolic health. Exercise increases GLUT4, uh, mediated glucose uptake and reverses visceral fat. Hydration supports kidney function and glucose uh, homeostasis. And sleep normalizes cortisol and appetite hormones, reducing insulin resistance. Metformin 
While achieving the glucose control does not address these underlying drivers, merely masking hyperglycemia, the symptom-focused approach risks disease progression as patients may develop complications, neuropathy and retinopathy, uh, despite controlled glucose uh, levels. That's the thing. Diabetes and type 2 diabetes fucks you up more than just the need for glucose regulation. It is horrible for your system. We should be trying to reverse it every single instance we can. It is a reversible condition. We should be trying to reverse it. If your doctor is not trying to reverse your type 2 diabetes, your doctor is committing malpractice. Like straight up. It's not even, it, it, to me, it's very clear. I don't understand how it's not clear to everybody. So they can have, they can still get develop other complications from diabetes, even though their uh, hyperglycemia is taken care of. Um, and despite glucose related levels, uh, physicians' failure to prioritize root causes of treatments neglects the patient's long term health. Period. End of stop. You know, evidence based guidelines and physician accountability. Clinical guidelines uh, from authoritative bodies that include the ADA, ADA emphasize lifestyle modif modifications as well as, corner, uh, as the cornerstone of prediabetes and type 2 diabetes management. Uh, recommend diet, exercise, and behavioral changes before or alongside pharm uh, pharmaco uh, pharmacotherapy. Berberine, while a supplement, is increasingly supported by peer-reviewed studies for its metformin-like efficacy. A physician who defaults to metformin without offering a supportive lifestyle intervention ignores evidence-based recommendations, fail, falling below the standard of care, fails to inform patients of, sa of safer, equally effective options, violating informed consent principles, risks patient harm through unnecessary me medication exposure and unaddressed disease progression. That is the thing. Like, if they are not trying to have it be the most safe way possible, lifestyle first, it's already malpractice. Already. A hundred percent. And the legal and, uh, legal and ethical implications. I wanted to get to this. So, to establish malpractice, four elements must be met. Duty. The physician owes the patient evidence-based Harm minimizing care. Harm minimizing care for a brand new pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetic would be lifestyle change. And if you want to go one step further, lifestyle change plus berberine. Uh, going straight to metformin skips both of those steps, lifestyle and then lifestyle plus berberine, and goes straight to a pharmaceutical that has a high uh, side effect profile, including 10 to 30% uh, people having very serious lifestyle disrupting gastric issues that may cause them to be less active. Um, I do believe that most people that go on metformin end up gaining weight, which is also contraindicated. Um, and uh, it's two steps away. Now, the breach, skipping lifestyle interventions for metformin alone violates guidelines and exposes the patient to harm. Causation, metformin's side effect uh, and failure to address root causes increases complication risks while lifestyle interventions could prevent progression. Therefore, is the first thing that should happen. And damages. Patients suffer physical harm. Uh, they get B2-12 deficiencies, disease, pro disease progression, and emotional distress from avoidable medical dependency. Now, the biggest thing that we need to talk about, because I'm sure there's people going to be like, well, you know, what if the patient just won't do it? What if the patient just won't do it? Well, I'm sure there's no ca those cases. However, if you tell a person like, hey, you are pre-diabetic, and if this keeps going this way, you could lose your feet. Show the person pictures of type 2 diabetic foot amputations. I have done this many times. You can't do it on YouTube right now because they will delete my channel, but have them literally just go look online at type 2 diabetic foot amputations. Have them look at diabetic retinopathy and see what, see what that is. Have them look at the shit that can actually happen. Show it to them, doc. If your doctor is not exposing you to the very true real horrors of what can happen to you if you're type 2 diabetic, including everything from lower limb amputation, blindness, you can literally uh, have your skin just start rotting off by necrotizing fasciitis. Like, it is horrible. It, it, it's such a weird thing that we have so normalized a very serious illness that is completely lifestyle avoidable. It's very strange. I mean, it, it can't be looked at as any other thing except for a cash cow for pharmaceutical industry. Does everybody grasp that? Like, I mean, it is an avoidable lifestyle driven illness that we don't try to cure with lifestyle. And people spend, we spend close to a trillion dollars on just diabetes care alone. 
just diabetes care alone. That's wild that we don't we don't view it this way. It's wild that we don't see it as something horrible or negative, but that is what it is. Uh, so I am about to go take uh, you know take some time with the lovely wife. I hope all of you have an awesome, awesome evening. I'll be back tomorrow with a whole new slew of videos. I hope to see you all then, and I'll be shit-talking on X all night. God damn.